Welcome back to Great SpaceX. A new week comes, and there is a lot of promise this time for space fans. Most crucially, SpaceX's next Starship test launch could lift off right on Friday, pending regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration and other agencies. In fact, last weekend, SpaceX de-stacked Ship 25 from Booster 9. This was the sixth de-stack of S-25, and hopefully the last. The hot state ring was also removed, but probably it'll be best for us if we stopped guessing altogether if this will be the final stack because <laughs> uh, there's always another one, isn't there? However, this isn't too surprising or sad. There's plenty of time to do this before the NET Friday launch. Consider this. The most probable issues can arise from either grid fin motors or avionics hardware. Besides that, we also found that Ship 25 lost a tile, so they they should have de-stacked for that reason. In any case, this makes sure that the Mechazilla system gets a constant workout. Now, there is great news. The issues that led to the IFT-1 ending the way it did have all been addressed. If there is a failure during IFT-2, it'll be for something completely different. That's right, there shouldn't be any repeat failures, hopefully. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also has more confidence in this version version of the Ship 25. He expressed this in a tweet in September, in which he wrote, much higher chance of success than Flight 1. This time, I think we have around 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity, he wrote in another tweet earlier in August. However, even getting to stage separation would be a win, Musk added to his statement. But in order to come to the final conclusion, the Federal Aviation Administration needs to issue a launch license for a second test to be attempted first. The regulator completed its safety review of Starship back in October, but the project still needs a sign-off from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the license to be given. Well, FWS, Elon Musk wants to buy a fishing license. According to a recent episode of Lex Fritman's podcast, love that guy, Musk recently shared his opinion on the regulatory challenges faced by both his companies, shedding light on the often bizarre and humorous nature of bureaucratic hurdles. Musk's anecdotes touch on issues ranging from obtaining fish licenses for rocket launches to conducting experiments with seals wearing headphones. This is the extensive regulatory scrutiny Tesla faces in the automotive sector. He notes that the company is subject to oversight from over a hundred regulatory agencies, both domestically and internationally. The sheer volume of regulations is emphasized by Musk's remark that the regulations could fill an entire room. This regulatory landscape underscores the complexity and meticulous adherence required in the automotive industry. Drawing parallels between automotive and space endeavors, Musk highlights the regulatory challenges faced by SpaceX, particularly concerning the Starship launch. While the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA for short, has granted approval, Musk reveals that regulatory approval from the FWS is pending. This unexpected intersection of space launches and wildlife regulations prompts Musk's humorous suggestion to purchase a fishing license. The narrative takes a turn towards marine life as Musk describes concerns about rockets hitting sharks. He points out the rarity of shark sightings in the vast ocean and the challenge of calculating the probability of encountering a shark. The comedic element is heightened when Musk reveals that regulatory authorities were hesitant to share data with another department within their own organization, leading to a comical internal quandary. The tale continues with the un expected involvement of an organization concerned about the potential impact of rocket launches on whales in international waters. Musk questions the logic behind this concern, emphasizing the vastness of the ocean and the minimal likelihood of hitting a whale. The narrative unfolds with Musk's skepticism about the perceived threat to whales and the bizarre bureaucratic process involved. Procreation concerns related to sonic booms during rocket launches from Vandenberg in California. Despite the steady increase in the sail population, following numerous rocket launches, authorities insisted on conducting experiments involving seals wearing headphones. The imagery of a seal strapped to a board with headphones on adds a surreal and rather entertaining element to the narrative.
narrative. The absurdity reaches its peak when Musk recounts the need to kidnap a seal twice for the same experiment. The concept of obtaining a seal of approval becomes a playful pun in this context. Musk's storytelling unveils the lengths to which regulatory processes can go, showcasing the peculiarities and, at times, the irrationality of bureaucratic decision-making. All in all, I hope that the delay won't be too long. We could see the Starship take off this week, or at least this month. In other related news, a top Department of Transportation official suggested the launch industry should help pay for additional resources for the FAA's Commercial Space Office. Speaking at a virtual meeting of the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee, or COMSTEC, November 8th, Pauli Trottenberg, Deputy Secretary of Transportation, all but rejected calls from industry to sharply increase the budget of the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, or AST, to deal with growing levels of launch activity. At an October 18th hearing by the Senate Commerce Committee's Space Subcommittee, industry witnesses recommended a significant increase in the budget for that office, which received nearly $37.6 million in the fiscal year of 2023 to hire more personnel to handle launch and re-entry licensing. One witness, Bill Gersten Mayor of SpaceX, specifically recommended doubling the office's budget. Berg said there were competing priorities elsewhere in the FAA, noting that aviation did not receive as much support in last year's bipartisan infrastructure law as other modes of transportation. I don't think we make... I don't think we made the commensurate investments that were needed on the aviation side. Put some investments into airports, but not into, I think, the bread and butter systems of the FAA. ...to contribute some portion of additional revenues needed for enhancing the AST. We're an agency that has the ability to generate revenues, um, and I think that's going to be a question, you know, for this industry and for other industries. Adding that she was offering her own opinion and not that of the department itself. While the FAA does generate revenue from user fees for aviation, it has not generally collected any such fees for launch licensing. She returned to it later in the meeting when another Comstack member noted the relatively small size of the AST budget relative to the overall FAA budget. The FAA requested $19.8 billion dollars for the fiscal year of 2024, of which $42 million would go to the AST. She described the tensions between the launch industry and the commercial aviation industry on access to airspace, and criticism from the launch industry that proposed the FAA guidelines for de-conflicting airspace uses appeared to favor aviation. I wanted to chuckle a little bit because, I mean, admittedly, commercial aviation funds most of the agency. She argued that while the AST's budget and the requested increase is a small fraction of the overall FAA budget, every penny gets fought over. She mentioned competing priorities, such as investing in technologies to address a recent series of near misses in aviation. You can say each little piece doesn't cost that much, but when you kind of add it all together, the, the agency has big needs writ large. Her views were seasoned by a four and a half month stint earlier this year as acting FAA administrator. That includes it, she said, in a lot of, I think, sort of the interagency parts of commercial space. Working with the White House and other agencies. A lot of collaboration, sometimes some spirited engagement. One factor driving the industry's desire to increase the FAA's budget is the demands of a new licensing regime for commercial launches called Part 450. While designed to be streamlined, some of the first companies to use that new licensing process have complained of delays. Gersten Mayer at the October hearing warned, the entire the entire regulatory system is at risk of collapse as the FAA moves vehicles operating under older licenses to the new system. The regulations and the time and complexity of completing an application, said Michael O'Donnell, Deputy Associate Administrator of Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA during the Comstack meeting. He argued that the four licenses issued to date under Part 450 were all for new vehicles, which required substantial iterations during the license review process. The FAA believes that future Part 450 evaluations will be completed in a timely way. Comstack members were not necessarily convinced. Karen Schinewerk, a consultant who previously worked for Relativity Space and SpaceX, argued new companies using the Part 450 processes are at a potential disadvantage to existing companies with older licenses. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm quite concerned with what I see as it looking like a hindrance to newer entrants and and that it's affecting potential competition among um 
providers, launch operators. In your opinion, is this suggestion reasonable? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to support us even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through that link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain exclusive content. Gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.